Alright guys, how are you guys? Uh, it's Mr. Noodle 795 here with a Barbarian playthrough, as I said would be next. So, as you've already seen this, if you've watched my Monk playthrough, it's going to be the same section for the beta, just with a different character. So I'm going to start off again, here we come up to New Tristram, just killing zombies. Just hacking and slashing. So, so far, like I said, the Monk and the Barbarian are my two most favorite, because I'm all, all about melee. And so naturally, since there's only two primary, or two primarily melee characters that are in the game, Monk and the Barbarian, these are the two I like the most. But I mean, that's not to say that I don't enjoy playing the Witch Doctor, the Wizard, and the Demon Hunter. I think all classes are extremely fun. But these are the two that I have most fun playing, just because I like being a melee character and being in the thick of things. I've never seen anyone fight like that before. So, a new record, 12 monsters killed, look at that, I'm pro. So, I'm gonna listen to this guy tell me something, and head this way to go see Leah, in this tavern or whatever. So, as you can see in the bottom right, like I was saying in my first video, the Barbarian has completely gotten rid of mana, and in this game runs off something called Fury. And as you can see, like I was explaining, when you're not in combat, your fury starts to degenerate. As you can see, it's slowly, steadily going down. So it drives this, you know, need to stay in combat to keep your fury up. And to, uh, so you can keep using, you know, your very powerful skills. So here we are, it's got a new skill. Uh, Hammer of the Ancients, call forth a massive hammer and just smash enemies directly in front of you for 180% weapon damage. Hammer of the Ancients has a 15% increased chance to critical hit. And threatening shout, but I'm going to use Hammer of the Ancients because it's badass. The dead talk to Leah again. All, unless something is done. I will send them back yeah. to their grave. Uh, I have I gone through this beta in my Monk video, which was the first one I released. So for those of you who have seen it, you'll understand why I'm skipping some of the dialogue. For those of you who haven't, I apologize. But then again, it's not really all that important. I mean, granted, most of you who are probably watching this are probably people who like Diablo uh, franchise and are going to get the game when it comes out on release day. So you'll see this whole section when the final game releases, regardless. So I hope it's not that big a deal. Your warriors will be avenged. You are returning to Captain Dalton. Well, and tell me where to go. After they kill some zombies that break through this barricade somehow. I well, don't have enough to use Hammer the Agents yet. I'll probably use it on this wretched mother up here. And boom, there goes one guy. Oh, and as you can see, I'm using Bash, which is a spirit. That's sorry, not spirit. Ge Fury generator. Which I think does 145 weapon damage. And has a chance to knock him back as you saw when I hit the wretched mother. So it's a good single single target uh, fury generator. But not as useful as other ones maybe call like cleave, which like uh, hits a bunch of enemies in front of you. But it does have its uses. There you go, I have the agents. Ooh, boom. See? So it's a really cool Fury Spender, it's probably one of my more favorites of all the time I've played a Barbarian so far. It's always never left my uh, one of my skill slots, it's always been there. Because it's a really useful at, you know, dispatching small groups of foes that are clumped tightly together. Or, you know, it's a really effective also on, you know, enemies with high health. Like a bunch of others, it takes off a huge chunk. And it also doesn't cost a whole lot of fury to use. So when you're at max fury, you can use it in you know, a good amount of times. Over and over, like, just spam it. And as you'll probably see later on, on some enemies that I fight. As you can see, it's also nice because it does have an extra 15% chance to critical hit. Which can happen a lot more than you think sometimes in this game. Sometimes you'll, you know, you'll be fighting a powerful enemy. And you use it like three times in a row, and two out of three times it'll critical hit. So you never know, that, that extra 15% critical uh, hit chance does come in the end. And you see, you're gonna own those guys with it and just spam it. So it's 
really cool. Definitely a move that I can only see the bard having. So we're going to digress forward. going to see if that's better when I have two of them on. And it is not. So I'll keep the shield on. The shields are useful. Oh. Oh, well. Cool story. Goodbye. I don't have time for him. Gonna destroy some barrels. And as you can see, when you destroy objects in the world, you gain fury. I guess it somehow counts as an enemy, or Blizzard did that as a way to keep your fury up if you're not in battle, because, you know, obviously there'll be times when you're playing Diablo as a bard where after you kill a group of enemies, you're gonna have to progress forward in the map, and there won't be enemies. So, I mean, as you play, there's tons of like objects and stuff you can kill to, you know, for gold, and uh, you know, sometimes enemies pop out. So they probably did it as a way to keep your fury up. You know, if you do encounter like a lengthy period where there's no guys, and you know, and then you get a large group, and then suddenly now you have zero fury. So I figure they probably did it as a little way to just help you keep your fury stabilized. So I'm just gonna bash these people. Somehow he dodged my hammer. But no worries. He got bashed in the face anyway. Kill these little cool fiends and destroy these barrels. So here we're gonna come up to the first handmaiden of the game. It wasn't that hard at all though. Weapon rack, cracked hand axe, probably garbage. I'm gonna stop enemies. Use the hammer of the ancients. You can dispatch a couple of them real nicely. I'm gonna attack this guy's upper torso because he's being annoying. Alright. Yeah, a couple more enemies to kill. Oh, there we go. Minor health potion, upper torso, health globe. So here we are, we're gonna make our way back to New Tristram and talk to Leah so she can op come open this gate for us because apparently the bard can't just knock it down even though he's like immensely Thank strong. You for your help. But could you talk some sense into me? She won't give me. up on the idea of rescuing her uncle. Nor should she. I will help her. Yada yada yada. Checkpoint. Come. Here we go. Come to talk uncle. to Leah. We'll need to open the cathedral. Come, let us search for your uncle. So I got a couple items stashed away. I'm gonna keep them on me just uh, for when I do become level eight. I won't have to come back and get them. Uh, and then we're gonna go to the waypoint here after I equip some stuff. Nothing's good. Back to the old ruins. Here, let and me open onward. The Pick up this stone knife. Adria was my mother, but I don't know much about her. She died when I was very young. I was raised by Uncle Deckard. What of your father? Ah, uh, not enough theory. A great warrior who was lost when Tristram fell to the demons. Kill these zombie things here, open this chest. The health potion gold and some gloves. Nothing special. Uh, uh, so I don't know what class I'm gonna do next. As I've said, these are my two favorite classes. So I'm not sure as to which one is coming next. I'm inclined to think the Demon Hunter because I did have a lot of fun playing him the first time because he's pretty cool. You know, he can like dual wield mini crossbows and he's, you know, all ranged and he's like the assassin and, uh, you know, assassin and a bow is on kind of mixed together. Because, you know, he's got like some moves that are kind of assassin-like. Like, you know, the track ram, which is like a little ninja star thing he throws out. So I think that the fact that, you know, for the first time a hero in the game has two resources instead of one is kind of, uh, kind of cool. Because, you know, most, pretty much every character up until this game, you know, he's the only one in the game that has it too. They only have one resource where he has two, you know, like I said, discipline and hatred. And I guess while you're watching me just, you know, 
slash enemies to death with this new sword I got. Um, so basically, hatred is like spirit or the fury. Except it regenerates on its own at a slow rate, but he does also have moves or skills that you can assign to your mouse buttons and you know the hotkeys that generate fu uh, hatred. And, you know, so you have certain skills which will generate ha hatred, and you have certain more powerful skills. You know, using your bow or you know skills that inflict damage. They'll also use hatred, but then you have certain skills that help keep you alive. And those use discipline. So you have a move that you get in the beta called Vault, which is like you click on a spot. So if it's your right click, you click on an area on the map on your screen, and he does like a backflip to that location. So if you know if you're getting overwhelmed, you know, and you might think it might turn out badly, you can just go click on right click, and he'll do like a Vault. But that costs discipline, and you don't have very much discipline. And here I'm going to change out Bash for Cleave just to show you guys because I also like Cleave better than Bash. Anyway, so the Demon Hunter is kind of cool in that sense. Because it kind of almost makes you think, you know, have to be, you have to be strategic as the Demon Hunter because he's ranged, you know, but all ranged characters are typically, you know, they can do damage. But when, you know, enemies close in, they're usually not, their strong suit is usually not like their health and their defense. You know, they're best when they're at range from people. So you have to try and keep your distance to get in those uh, range shots. And you know, he also has a lot of skills that help keep foes at bay, you know, by slowing them or uh, stunning them. So, it's looking like Demon Hunter is probably going to be my next class. Because when I first saw, you know, when I was waiting eagerly to find out what the next class was, I for sure thought it was going to be like, Paladin. I was, I was hoping it'd be a paladin, but then you know, early on I was like, ah, they have the monk, and he's kind of like the paladin. We've already seen that. So you know, I was thought it might be the druid because you know they have the witch doctor. It's kind of like the necromancer. They have the sorceress, which is the, wiz the wizard. They have the paladin because he's pretty much in the monk. They have the barbarian again. So I was thinking what they could have done. I thought it would either be the druid or the Amazon because I knew they didn't have a range. Like a, a primary range class, so I thought it would be either the Amazon or the Druid. Cause, but then shortly after, I said, "Well, they have enough casters," so I was pretty sure it'd be the Amazon. But when they revealed it, and it was like Demon Hunter, which you know, when you saw it for the first time, you basically just said, "Oh, that's like the Assassin and the Amazon mix." So I was like, "Oh, that looks really cool," because you know, I never really played those two classes much, but they were still good classes on their own in their own, you know. So, but like I said, each class in this game is a lot of fun to play, and you know, it's for like there's classes for everyone. Like my one friend just, whenever he plays Diablo, he always goes magic, and you know, magic and Diablo, Diablo has always been a lot of fun because it's always extremely powerful, and it's always nice to have that one caster guy because he can just inflict like mega DPS and just take out like bosses like it's nothing. So that's kind of like why I like this game. It has it has classes for everyone. And there's always a different, you know, everyone plays it a different way. Everyone likes to play it their own way, so they have, you know, they pick a certain class because of that. And then that's just Diablo. And here I'm gonna use Hammer. Boom, cleave the captain to death. Hammer the rest. Boom. I'm gonna release more of these worm things on me. No match. I'm gonna pick up a health globe, and we're gonna progress into New York's Passage. And here we're going to see Deckard Kane for the first time, if this is the first video you're watching. If you've watched my monk, then this is the second time you've seen it. Yeah, it's corny, but you know, Blizzard's not known for their you know, crazy awesome in-game cinematics, but their actual cutscenes between acts, they've always been really cool. So I'm really anxious to see how these ones turn out, because you know, even though Diablo 2 was really old, their, you know, their uh, cutscenes between acts were actually quite cool, quite uh, well animated. And you know, now with the, you know, this game is next gen and everything. You know, I've seen some of the cutscenes from your know, stuff at E3 and uh, the VGAs, and they look like they're shaping up to be some really cool cinematics from the story of this game, and I can't wait. 
I'm gonna face this rogue executioner, and all he does is seem to want to just slash me and kick me. But I'll hammer the ancient him, and he will get owned. Thank you. But not without me coming with a close call. Here we are, we found Deckard Cain. He's gonna lead me back to the Cathedral Garden through his secret passage he somehow found out. And we're going to reunite him with his daughter. And now I just equipped two weapons. Because as you, as you all know, the Barb was infamous for being able to dual wield in Diablo 2. The only class being able to dual wield was him. However, in this one, the monk can dual wield and the demon hunter can dual wield. Although they can't dual wield all weapons. Actually, no, that's not true. The monk can actually dual wield any weapon. Any weapon that he's permitted to use. He can't dual wield many weapons because those are weapons only the barbarian can hold. But there is a benefit to dual wielding. Your DPS goes up because you attack slightly faster. And part one is coming to an end here, so catch up with me on part two.